the vice of Chintan Sada as a faculty for chemical engineering syllabus. Great syllabus. We will be covering the topic chemical reaction engineering. This is an important part of the gate syllabus. It covers around 8 to 10 questions, 8 to 10 marks out of 70 marks for the gate syllabus for the chemical part. We normally have 4 to 5 questions on this topic itself. So basically, chemical reaction engineering basically deals with the reactor design. The calculations to be done for designing the reactor with respect to the volume time required for carrying out the reaction basically involves two parts that is kinetics and the reactor design. Within kinetics we have to deal with the rate of the reaction that is the time required for achieving the specific conversion. There is another aspect that is the thermodynamics which deals with the equilibrium of the reaction. And the reactor design part basically involves the different types of reactors and how to derive the design equations for those reactions and then to find the volume. So we will be dealing with the theory part and then the problems solving or getting the volume of the reactor. So this part basically would involve the basics of chemical reaction engineering, reactor design equations and then the kinetic data interpretation which we get from the lab data. So basically the kind of reaction when it is to be carried out in a plant what we have is the raw material, energy and the manpower. Raw material is to be converted into product, product which is carried out in the reaction and then we have the downstream processes. So how is basically the reaction carried out in the reactor which decides the downstream processes. We have the reactor design in such a way that the amount of byproducts which are formed in the reaction is reduced and the downstream process will be more easier and we will get more purified product at a low cost. So it's basically the reactor which forms the heart of the chemical plant. So unless you design the reactor properly, you have to face difficulties with the downstream process. So coming to the kinetics, what we have to find out is the rate of the equation which will give us the time required for specific conversion and hence the volume of the reactor. So rate is nothing but the moles of the reactant consumed per unit time per unit volume or also moles of the product formed per unit time per unit volume. So it's defined as 1 by mu dNA by dt into 1 by mu. Now depending on whether the volume is constant or variable, we can write it as 1 by mu 1 by into 1 by v upon into dNA by dt that is v taken out of the derivative sign if it's a constant for the particular reaction in a given reactor or else it has to be solved within the derivative and taking the image. The units as you know SI unit will be kilo mole per second per meter cube. Concentration is nothing but moles per unit volume. And mu, mu is the stoichiometric coefficient. When we write the reaction A plus B giving product, mu of the is nothing but the coefficient, stoichiometric coefficient of A, that is mu is equal to minus 1. If we have a reactant, it's negative with a negative sign, whereas for product it would be mu of P would be 1. So rate of reaction with respect to any reactant A or B or with respect to any product has to be same. It's only the stoichiometric coefficient which would be changing and hence the rate. Rate also defined as K into the concentration term is to alpha. The K is nothing but the rate constant. And alpha order of the reaction. Order of the reaction is to be always find out experimentally. It's not the stoichiometric coefficient. Only in case of elementary reaction. Elementary reactions are those which occur in a single step reaction. It's like A plus B giving product in a single step. Whereas it's possible to have multiple steps for a single A plus B giving product. It's like A going to radicals, radical formation, B going to radical formation and both the radicals together giving product. So, order of the reaction is always found out experimentally. It's equal to stoichiometric coefficient if it's an elementary reaction, that's a single step reaction. Molecularity, there is one more concept called molecularity, which is nothing but equal to the stoichiometric coefficient of the rate limiting step. So, molecularity would be equal to stoichiometric coefficient if it's an elementary reaction, whereas for 
multiple step reaction, we have to find out the rate limiting step in the reaction mechanism and then it will be equal to the stoichiometric coefficient. So if you have an elementary reaction, molecularity is equal to stoichiometric coefficient is equal to the order of the reaction. This is what we define it as rate. It can be written as minus RA or RA depending on the sign convention. Negative is negative preferred because when we write the rate of consumption of A for the reaction A plus B giving product is nothing but DCA by DT. And as you know, rate is always a positive term, whereas DCA by DT is a negative. So we have minus RA is equal to minus DA. So we take care of the negative side. By convention, negative is preferred, but it depends on the student how to write the rate expression so that it doesn't neglect the negative side. Taking negative on both the sides would be easier, whereas if you have only RA on one side and minus DC on the other side, it's possible that you miss the negative sign by taking the integral. So from this expression, RA is equal to KC raised to alpha. K is the rate constant, whereas C is the concentration. So finally, what we get is rate is a function of concentration as well as temperature. The alpha, the order of the reaction, is to be determined experimentally, which will come through the kinetic data, which we get from the lab. So going forward, what we need to deal is with different types of reactions. reversible reaction and reversible reactions. Then we have single step. We defined initially as elementary step reaction, multiple step, then we have series, parallel, depending on the phases, we classify it as homogeneous. Heterogeneous. Still further would be the catalytic and non catalytic. and reversible as we have defined initially. It's, so major uh, maximum conversion if we can attain for reversible reaction would be nothing but the equilibrium conversion in C. For irreversible, it's x equal to 1. For single step reaction, what we need to understand is the order defined by the stoichiometric coefficient. As for multiple step, it's a rate limiting step which determines the rate of the reaction. For series reaction, it would be like example A giving R and R giving P. So R is the intermediate, whereas P is the product. For parallel, K would be giving R and E itself would be giving P. So it's basically both the reactions A to R and A to P completing for consumption only. Homogeneous and heterogeneous is classified based on the phase. If we have all the reactants, products in single phase, Call it a homogeneous reaction, whereas heterogeneous would be reactant, product, catalyst, and the catalyst at different phases. Examples would be for homogeneous reaction, liquid phase reaction, or acidification, acid plus alcohol giving ester plus water. And heterogeneous reaction would be the hydrogenation reaction of maybe any alkene 
hierarchy. So it would be like we have the liquid substrate, H2 as the gas phase, and if it's a catalytic reaction, we have a solid catalyst. So you have liquid, gas, and solid, all the three phases present. Have liquid gas and a solid phase. Product may be a liquid or a solid. Catalytic and non catalytic again depends on whether the catalytic catalyst is present. Catalyst is basically the substance which takes part in the reaction, lowers the activation energy for the reaction, and hence the increases the rate of the reaction. And again, it's generated in the reaction. So it's not like and it is doesn't take part in the reaction. It takes part in the reaction and is generated back in the reaction. So it is basically not consumed due to the reaction, but maybe the side reactions may hinder the activity of the catalyst. So if you have so many reaction types, you need to deal with the rates. And to get the rates, the different mechanisms should be followed. So going ahead is the rate is function of temperature and concentration. Concentration as we know it comes from the C and C B from reactant A plus B giving product. A and B are the reactants. So it would depend on the concentration of A and B. Whereas temperature it is the rate constant. So rate constant then normally the method followed is the power law method. Within power law what we have is the Arrhenius equation E is equal to K0 E H2 minus E A by R T where K0 is the pre-exponential factor or the frequency factor which is again found out for a particular reaction through different theories collision theory, kinetic molecular gas theory or molecular dynamics and majorly what is being used is the collision theory whereas the activation energy Ea is the amount of energy required by the colliding molecules for the reaction to begin. It's a minimum amount of energy. So this is what is, we know some reactions are carried out at low temperature, some are initiated only at high temperature, it's because the activation energy Ea. Unless the molecules, colliding molecules have the energy equivalent to Ea, it's not possible to carry out the reaction. So Ea is basically the activation energy. The minimum energy required to carry out the reaction. K0 and Ea may be temperature dependent. So normally over a range of temperature is considered to be constant. It's not much variation. Now some reactions may be having the higher activation energy and some may be having low. So if it's having a higher activation energy, this exponential term is to minus Ea by Rt will definitely be lower and hence the rate of the reaction will be low. So what catalyst does is it lowers the activation energy. It tries to find out some other reaction pathway and hence follows a different mechanism through which the amount of energy Ea gets reduced and hence the rate of reaction is increased. The whole term exponential is what is called as the fraction of collisions which are successful to carry out the reaction. So what we have is the frequency factor into the success factor of the collisions giving the rate constant k. k is a function of temperature. Now it's by thumb rule what we say is having a rise of 10 degrees Celsius rise in the reaction temperature the rate constant normally doubles. But it doubles depending on the activation energy Ea comma the reaction temperature P combination. You can see if you increase activation energy Ea the exponential term goes on decreasing. Whereas if you increase the temperature is exponential term pudding. So it's like both are moving in the opposite direction. So it's a specific activation energy comma T combination which will give us the rate constant value. Rate constant value is required to find out the rate of the reaction and hence rate of the reaction will help us to find out the time required for completion of the reaction or the volume. So 
going ahead, once we have completed the types of reactions, we go ahead with the reactive types. Different types of reactors. First is the batch reactor, continuous, semi batch, or semi continuous. So, all are the different batches basically, all the reactants. of the AMP within the reactor keeps on changing with time. Overall within the reactor at any moment it has to be uniform that depends again on the type of mixing we have in the reactor. But with time concentration changes. That is for continuous reactor what we have is the continuous flow of the reactor into the reactor as well as continuous flow of the product out of the reactor. Within continuous, we have again two types, two ideal reactors, it's the plug flow reactor and the continuous stirred tank reactor. Plug flow reactor we want to define. It's like the liquid elements, the fluid elements. Each layer enters the reactor and exits. There is no lateral mixing or radial mixing. So overall, it's like the fluid elements are moving in a packet around the reactor. Mixing is complete segregation, no mixing. I guess for CSTR, continuous input of reactor. The reactants, continuous outflow of the product, and complete mixing. So, within the reactor at any position, concentration is uniform, temperature is uniform. Next, C inside the reactor is nothing but C except. Similar is with respect to temperature. So, there is neither spatial variation. We have to carry out, whereas for PFR, there is a spatial variation. The reaction A going to B, the product, the concentration of A at the entrance of the reactor would be high, whereas at the exit of the reactor it would be low. So it's over the length of the reactor, A is being consumed. So there is spatial variation, whereas for CSTR, there is no spatial variation. The reaction rate is uniform throughout. Now, again, for continuous reactor, we have a Another concept, it's like non steady state and steady state. What we mean by steady state is the concentration or the temperature of the reaction mixture doesn't vary with time. So, once the reactions are operated in a steady state for a CSTR, C doesn't change with time and also within the spatial coordinates of the Reactor. There is no variation with space coordinates as well as time coordinates. Whereas for PFR, there is a spatial variation, but at the same position at t equal to 0 and at, at t equal to the steady state reach and at t equal to some time after the steady state, the concentration would be uniform. So there is spatial variation but no variation with respect to time coordinates if steady state has been achieved. So at the steady state, when we say the steady state has been achieved is 
there is accumulation term that is dna by dt equal to zero this is what is defining the state state and for semi batch reactor it's reactant either dumped at t1 reactant dumped at t equal to zero one is being added to the reactor over extended period of time and product whether it's removed continuously or it's removed at the end it's like both batch as well as continuous mixed together forming semi batch reaction basically the gaseous phase reaction is a typical kind of batch wise you have the gases reacting added over extended period of time to maintain the pressure in the reactor and the product being given so when we go for the design equation we will be deriving for batch reactor pf1 and chtf Let's get the example of the reaction we just did in the product. Let us take a moment to question one, one. Let's go. A and B are the reactants. A one is the rate constant. T is the product. We need to be thorough with the units that helps us when deriving the equations. Whether we are making something, so rate units are given as kilo mole. In the side, it will be kilo mole per second in the cube. The rate constant. It depends on the type of the order of the reaction, that is alpha one, alpha two. So normally, general units would be concentration raised to one minus n, time inverse in general. The n is the total order of the reaction. So when you have two reactants, order with respect to A is alpha one, with B is alpha two. So total order would be alpha one plus. That is nothing but equal to. So for n equal to one, units of A would be concentration one minus one. That is nothing but zero. Only time inverse. N equal to two. It will be concentration inverse time inverse. Dealing with the stoichiometry, this is the most important part. When you try to derive the expression, we should be thorough with the stoichiometric part. So we have a very general reaction. A is the stoichiometric coefficient for A into A plus small b into capital B, giving C plus B with the whole stoichiometric coefficients. So right, the most general way it would be writing as per molecule of A. The reaction can be written in this form. So it's like per mole of A, we have small b by A moles of B getting converted to give specific C and D. We want to design a reactor. There would be some conversion which we are trying to achieve of the reactor. So, x a substitute for a conversion of a would be defined as the number of moles of a right, initially n is zero minus n a, which is the moles of the reactor. Reactant a present at time t <coughs> upon n is zero. Nothing but moles consumed upon the total. Moles of A fed. Now, if we have a constant volume reactor, constant V, then we can divide numerator and denominator by V. What we get is C A zero minus C A upon C A zero. In short, if we want to find the exit concentration, concentration at the end of the reaction, it will be C A 
Uh, zero into one minus x a. X a is the conversion of a. Normally the conversions are defined with respect to limiting reactant. So what we mean by limiting reactant is suppose for this reaction a plus b giving product carried out in a batch direct. Initial is like one is too much stoichiometry, which we see over here. A plus B is giving products zero. Down 10 moles of A. And 8 moles of D. To carry out the reaction. Suppose that it's complete conversion. So the first reactant which will be getting completed fast will be the B, since it presented less amount compared to A. So B is nothing but the limiting reactant. Because it's Nb less than Nb. This is with respect to batch system. So what if we have a continuous system? system we would be having some flow rate of molar flow rate of A and molar flow rate of B units would be nothing but kilo mole per second. So what we need to compare is the molar flow rate F A and F B. That is molar flow rate is F is nothing but F A is concentration of A C A is into, into the volumetric flow rate. We compare for batches the number of moles of A and B down at T equal to 0. That is for continuous, it is to compare FB, molar flow rate of A and molar flow rate of B. For batch system, we compare total volume of the reactor B at T equal to 0 and at the, with respect to time, how the volume changes, what the reaction gets up. Generally, for liquid phase reactions, there is no change in V because of the incompressibility of the fluid. Liquids are considered to be incompressible fluids, hence there is no much density variation, there is no change in the volume. Whereas for gaseous phase reactions, in incompressible fluids, <coughs> there is a variation in density with pressure. And hence we need to change into take into account the variation in V with conversion. <coughs> So if we have a constant volume, we can replace moles by concentration, and hence we get this derivation. C is equal to C is equal to 1 minus x. So initially, if a reaction is given, we need to first find out the limiting reactant, and then take limiting reactant as the basis. Conversion of that limiting reactant should be taken as the basis, and the calculation should be for Coming to the general reaction. minus xa, xa is the conversion, a is the limiting reactant, so define a xa. All the calculations now basis will be considered as xa. So now if you want to find out the number of moles of B present in the reactor at the end of the reaction, it would be nb0 minus the moles of B considered. As you can see, one mole of A assumes B by A moles of B. So, Na0 into Xa is nothing but moles of A consumed. 
into the stoichiometric coefficient that is per mole of A giving consuming B by A. This is the moles of A consumed into B by A. So N B0 minus B by A into N A0 X A would be the moles of B present at the end. Similarly for C, now C is the product which is formed. So N C0 which is present initially if there is some product present in the reactor initially itself plus the moles of C formed. Moles of C formed is per mole of A, C by A moles of C are formed. So, with respect to the basis, if you want to write, N is equal to C is moles of A consumed into C by A. Similarly, it would be N B0 plus B by A, N is equal to In more general form, if you want to write N B, it would be taking n is 0 common so what we have is phi b a constant which is nothing but ratio of n b 0 to n is 0 minus b by a x a where phi b is n b 0 minus n is 0 Having done with the stoichiometry, now we need to take into account how the model changes. So, if for a reactor gaseous phase reaction, as we know, B is variable with respect to flow systems, it would be the volumetric flow rate which would be carry. So, how the volumetric flow rate or capital B changes with? The gaseous phase equation we will follow the ideal gas law that is PV is equal to Z and RT. Where Z is the compressibility coefficient, P is the pressure, B is the volume, N is the number of moles, R is the universal gas constant, and T is absolute temperature. So, P is Z and RT and RT. So, now when we are comparing at T equal to 0 and at TXZ that is B0 and B final. When we take the ratio of B final, B0 and B final will be different now. So B final by B0 will be nothing but R being constant, we can remove that. What we have is the product of these ratios of all the pressure, compressibility coefficient, number of moles, and temperature. If you have a constant temperature reaction, this would turn out to be 1. Generally, ZF, the compressibility coefficient, doesn't change much at the normally operated temperatures and pressures. Finally, what we need to deal is the pressure and the moles. Again, if it's an isobaric process, we are maintaining the pressure and again it will be 1. So, finally, it's the moles of the change in the moles for the reaction. So, taking the example of ammonia reaction and 2 plus gaseous phase reaction, how ammonia synthesis. N2 plus 3H2 giving H3. So here 4 moles of reactant are being consumed, here 2 moles of product. So there is a delta N which is 2 that is N moles of product minus 1 plus 3 plus minus 2. So 
because of this change in voice. There will be change in the volume of the reaction which we need to consider. Is to be directly as a function of energy. So we define delta, which is nothing but change in the modes of the reaction minus NP minus NR. And we have F by NP0 is nothing but NF by N0. Total modes NP0. N0 would be N0 plus N B0 plus N C0 plus N B0 whereas N total at any time is 20 would be N P0 plus delta N A0 plus N C0 Delta is the change in the modes of the reaction per mole of A consumed. So Na0 into Xk is the total moles of A consumed into delta would give the total change in the moles of the system. Np0 was initially having conversion Xk, we will be having the change in the moles that come into Na0 into Xk. So going further, we have again one more parameter epsilon which is nothing but change in moles total moles when x a is equal to 1 upon the total moles fed that is n p 0 so it would be delta n a 0 into since x a is equal to 1 upon n p 0 so it is delta into y a 0 where y a 0 is nothing but the mole fraction and a 0 upon and b 0 so when we substitute over here the final is nothing that Epsilon C on and P zeros. So we get B final is equal to B zero, which is initial upon one plus epsilon C. So what we have achieved here is V as a function of conversion for the variable volume there. Yeah. So having deal with the constant volume variable volume the rate expression rate constant we now move to deriving the rate of the reaction for first order reaction Giving product. So, nothing rate expression. Rate is nothing but function of concentration and temperature. Rate constant is 1. So, we have K1 CA. Alpha is the order, first order. Alpha is equal to 1. 
So we know minus R A is nothing but minus D C A by D T is equal to A one C. So we get the profile of how concentration changes with time. C A with T. So we go for the integration minus D C A by C A is equal to K one D T. Is concentration with time. This is what for a batch reactor you'll be having some CA zero. When you define X A, so you have achieved the required CA F. That will allow us to find the time. This expression, we have got C A comma T addition, and then we can find X A comma T. So what we need to do is something like C A F is equal to C A zero into one minus X A. What we have is the value of one upon one minus X A. You can do for n is equal to alpha is equal to zero for zero order reaction, alpha is equal to two, and alpha is equal to three. The only thing what changes here is this expression minus dCa by dT will be k1. For alpha is equal to two, it will be minus dCa by dT k1 cA square. Order of the different types of orders of the reaction, we have different expressions. These expressions is basically important to understand how to derive it instead of marking the formulas. You can directly derive it in the exam. It's possible that when you try to mark it up, you may lose some of the other terms or have a mistake with the signs. Of one by C A plus its element of C A. Integration of integration of x is to n square to d x x is to n plus one upon n plus one plus the constant term is constant. So I'll put a constant, put in the conditions that e equal to zero, C A equal to C A naught. Carry out the refinement and solve the integral. Integration of one by C A plus one plus the constant term is constant. Integration of one by C A plus one plus the constant term is constant. 